Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Sharon Cullen Art. Today is another Tiny Tuesday tutorial and we will get into it. I hope you all had a great Labor Day weekend and I'm sorry for this going up so late on Tuesday. I've still been struggling a lot with my pain and now asthma season is starting for me and I'm just having one problem after another, like usual, all those autoimmune things. But anyway, what I'm going to try to do is pound out a few of them so that I can just have them automatically load up on Tuesday mornings early for you. But uh, in the meantime, let's get to it and I'll show you what we're going to do. I'm taking a pencil and I'm just going to go ahead and sketch in uh, a couple of things. I want to get a small lake or river in and I want to have a rickety old dock coming across and this is going to be kind of a hazy rainy day. It's very rainy here today so I thought I'd go with that theme and uh, let me just go ahead and draw that little dock in. First I'm going to put in just some straight lines uh, and then I will change the board. So this is going to be very faint. want some of these to be kind of slanted like they're falling off. And then the planks are going to kind of go off the edge a little bit. Put some space between them. Maybe have one or two missing. That one's got a hole in the side like a knot fell out of it. And these are going to have to have the side showing, of course. I'll show you what I drew in here. There's my dock and then just the lines for a lake and a backdrop for the sky and a um, bunch of trees. So now what I'm going to get is I want some Payne's Gray to start out with. So I'm going to grab a paintbrush and I'm just going to go across the sky. My paintbrush looks a little bit dirty. I thought I cleaned it well but you never know. 
There we go. That's all right. It'll all disappear very soon. There, I'm bringing it right down to the where the trees will be going in, but that's okay too. And I'm going to go in with some Payne's Blue Gray, which is by Daniel Smith. Payne's Gray will work too. And I'm going to start at the top, somewhat dark. And I'm going to allow this to gradate down. See it kind of run down here. Just letting it do its own thing. Getting the excess water off my tape so it doesn't dribble into my painting. And I don't know if you can see at the bottom here, there is a line of water right where I put in my wet line to stop. So I'm just going to go along that bottom and take up the excess water so we don't end up with the bloom down there. I'm going to go ahead and let that dry. And then I'm going to get some kind of a light green. I'm using Green Gold by Daniel Smith. You can use some sap, add a little bit of yellow to it. To get this color, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so you can see everything I'm doing here. This is the color that I have picked. And I'm gonna go through over my grasses all over the place with this color. Trying not to hit the sky. Be very careful about that. Try to keep your line just a hint below that so that it doesn't go into your skyline. And um, the front is going to be a little bit darker. It's going to kind of be in a darkened area. So I'm just going to allow this to go on, leaving this portion alone. And then I'm going to take a little bit of my sap green, and I'm just going to go along the edges of the water line with the darker green. that blend in. I might take a little bit of burnt umber, burnt sienna, whatever you've got. Oh, I think I got my Piamonite gem genuine here and I'm just going to kind of make part of this grass area brown. Like a brown patch. Same with over here. I want to make a little brown patch. And then I'm going to take some of my sap greens to go in here. went across my tape. I'm just going to go across my paper a little bit here. So it looks like ground. Oops, I didn't want it to come up that far. My hands are shaking lately and I don't know why. I don't is that old age that makes you do that? I used to have such steady hands. I mean, I know I'm on medication that makes me shaky, but those asthma drugs will do that. But I'm wondering, you know, I'm in my 50s still, sort of. <laughs> so, um, I'm just curious. Ah, well, that's going to end up a tree. How pretty is that? Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and let that dry, and then we're going to need to put in some trees. I'm going to wait and do my water last, or do my water and then my dock last, but the reason I'm doing my water last is because you want to have some reflection of trees in the water, and I know some artists... <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, we'll do that in reverse. And then their trees don't line up because they're not paying attention to that. So I like to put my tree, trees in first and then put my water in so that I know exactly where those reflections are supposed to go. So let me go ahead and take care of that. I'm going to let this dry and then we'll put our trees in. Okay, the magic of YouTube. It's dry so fast, right? Um, okay, I'm going to use my gray again, so I'm going to keep that out there. But in the meantime, I think I'm going to take a darker green, whatever you have. If you need to mix ultramarine blue with some yellow, you can do that. Why don't I do that instead of taking fancy colors out? I'll just put, I'm going to put a little ultramarine blue in with this green gold that I have and see what I come up with here. I want to get a nice dark green. It's a little too blue. 
So I'm gonna add a little more blue. And then I'm gonna, since I do have sap green here, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my sap green rather than a yellow, just to get my dark green in here. And it wouldn't hurt to have a little bit of my Payne's Gray to gray it down. I'm just gonna do that a little. There we go, that looks really good. You could just use Payne's Gray in a green. I'll show you how that looks. If you take your Payne's Gray, put that on your, on your palette, and then take a little bit of your sap green and add that in. So you get a beautiful dark green. In fact, I kind of like that better than this one. I might mix them together. There we go. And now I'm going to go over and start to add trees in along here. Gonna add some up over here, a little taller. Now as they go into the middle, I'm gonna gray them down a little bit more. So I'm gonna grab a little more of my Payne's Gray and whatever was on my brush, and I'm just gonna gray this down a little bit more because they're getting into the distance. I'm going to leave that green there that I had. I want these a little bit bigger too. So I'm just going to bring them up a little bit. And then that greener color. I didn't rinse my brush, but it doesn't matter. There we go. That looks a little bit better. Saving a little bit of that white on the edge there of the rain and letting it drain down by itself. It almost looks like rain coming down in the background. So now I'm gonna take my Payne's Gray. I'm gonna wet this whole lake area. My brush is a little dirty, doesn't matter. And I don't care if it touches the tree line. If it's still wet, it'll just drain your trees right down and it'll look absolutely Perfect, so. Gonna go around my dock, under my dock. If you miss a little bit with a light gray, no big thing, because there's gonna be shadows under the dock later anyway. Now I'm taking my gray, and I'm just gonna make it a little bit darker up close. You can see the depth of the water when you're up close or if you're on a lake with a shoreline it'll get lighter as it comes closer but when you're on a small lake and you're looking across it you're gonna see the shadows from the sky. And I'm just gonna kinda of put that in like that and let it spread around. It'll do its own thing. Then I'm gonna take some of my green and just trickle that in there a little bit. Okay. And that's all there is to that. We're gonna let that dry and see where we're at. Actually, this is looking like it's striped, so I don't like that. I'm gonna pull a little bit of it back, and it's, this is because I had my lake so wet, <laughs> so to speak. There, that's a little bit better. There. Okay, go ahead and let that dry. The next thing we're gonna do is the dock. So I'm gonna grab, oops, I lost my dock picture here. Okay, I wanna grab some brown, um, like some, maybe some raw umber, if you have that, or if you have 
burnt umber, you can use that too. I'm just gonna use raw umber here. I'm gonna wet my brush and water it way down for the top. Actually, I'm gonna add a little bit of gray to my raw umber to gray it down a bit because it's too pretty looking and I want this dock to look kinda yucky. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I need to wet my brush again, make sure it's real light and I realized that my water did not come up to my boards in some places. I should have had one right here too. There. I'm just gonna go ahead and do the things that would be darker because they're shadowed, like the sideboard underneath the dock here. And the sideboards of these top boards. Okay. Some of the spaces between the boards, I'm going to show the side of the board so that you can tell that's the side of the board. And then let that dry. I'm going to paint in the areas where the water would be showing through but I want it to be darker because those areas this must not have been completely dry those areas would be darker because they get shadowed by the dock so I'm also going to shadow under here What do I need to do next? Um, I want to work on my foreground a little bit. Uh, let's see, I want to put in some small kind of uh, trees. I'm going to take some of my gray and some of my brown and just kind of mix it together. These will just be like little bushes and stuff, making sure my lake is dry. It's not dark enough. And I probably should go to a smaller brush. It'll oops, be easier. Let's see. This is a number four round. All of my brushes are sable that I'm using. It's just a preference I have. Just adding branches to this. A bit of that other old green to it, and I'm going to add some grasses in.
somebody was wondering how I could do branches like I did. And I think her problem was that she was having trouble controlling her brush. Uh, I'm not sure if that was the case, but I know that when I first started out, getting a fine line with a brush, especially a bigger brush, um, was hard because I was pressing so hard. And that's a lefty thing. We tend to press hard for whatever reason. I don't know. But, um, yeah, so I think if you just practice with a piece of paper or doing these little tutorials that don't really mean anything, you can do them and just learn how to make your brush stroke smaller. I think I want to just put a little bitty bird in the sky. Just a simple thing. So I'm just going to do this. But he needs a partner, so we'll do this. Eh, do it over here. There we go. And a little more definition on this. Right now I'm just using my Payne's Gray to get some lines and to make this dock, the holes in the dock a little bit more visible. It was too dark, so I'm just taking a wet brush and pulling some of it back up here. Actually, this will probably help a little bit. Payne's Gray stains very quickly. So I may have ruined this. I'm just going to rub, 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 rub. There. That helped. If it's already ruined, it doesn't help. matter if you scrub it and then dab it. You can always fix your other colors. It's easier to do that. So that's what I'm going to do. Put them back in there. Lost the point on my brush. If you lose the point on your brush, just spin it on your palette. Or mixing tray. I always say palette, and I mean mixing tray. I'm going to go to an even smaller brush. This is an Ott brush, and I'm taking my paints gray, and I'm just going to put a little more depth under the dock, and then I'm going to come back with some white gouache. To do this let's see if I could do it I'm just gonna put kind of a ripple effect around the legs holding the deck up yeah that will work Add a couple little ripples in your water, you can. As you go into the distance, make sure you go smaller. If you want tree trunks, you can put tree trunks in. If you want them birch, you might want to put white ones in. You can see how that'll look. It may not look good at all. I just thought of it. Oh, it looks okay.
I think the white looks kind of nice on this painting so that you can um, get a little contrast. Looks like I have a couple spaces here I need to fix that would be gray from the water. There we go. Putting a little more gray up at the water's edge here. Like a shadow. And then maybe some dark for this bush here, this tree. Okay. Using bee paper again today, 100% cotton. I'm gonna put some fall leaves right on this, just like they're there aren't that many. They've already fallen off. This was just some Aussie red gold. And now I believe I am done. So, everybody, remember... Be courageous, paint with wild abandon, and most of all, be kind to each other. Take care, everybody. God bless you. See you next Tuesday.